Bristol, New Orleans. What links them? If you said ports, wealth, diversity, or the slavery heritage, you'd be right. In short, people of African ancestry have made overwhelming contributions to these cities and Western culture as a whole. Break it down. Break it down. Did you know that Bristol was the first slave port? But it was later moved to Liverpool because it was easier for the large ships to fit into their docks. Later on, Liverpool actually generated more money from the slave trade than Bristol and London put together. Did you know Perrow's Bridge was erected in honour of an enslaved African? The slave trade accounted for 60% of British trade and 40% of Europe as a whole. Both Bristol and Liverpool made phenomenal amounts of money from the sale of enslaved Africans. Many banks were established on the money made from the peculiar trade, as they called it. Liverpool was the major banking centre in the UK. Martins Bank, based in Liverpool, was the last big provincial bank to be merged into the Big Five. It was absorbed later in the 1960s by Barclays Bank. Slavery funded the Industrial Revolution and the development of the first locomotive in Liverpool. Shipbuilding was also a major industry developed from the sale of human cargo. Now many of us know, or should know, about the debauchery, rape, violence and degradation that Africans suffered at the hands of Europeans during the slave trade. But what of us now? Many people of African ancestry are still here. 500 years trapped in the triangular trade from Africa to the West Indies to America. You know the picture. The 1950s and 60s saw the migration of West Indians to this country and as a result of that, here we are, British-born blacks, or as I prefer to say, Anglo-Africans. Can you think of any similarities or differences between Bristol and Liverpool? All three cities, Liverpool, New Orleans and Bristol, have got their slave trade heritage and all the history rooted in that, and the large amount of wealth be attributed from the sale of Africans, as well as the remnants of the culture. They've all got beautiful buildings, you know, the money and the masonry, what they put into designing some of the houses and the splendour of them. Yeah, there's um, that in, in kind, you know, Bristol and Liverpool in particular with their listed buildings, you know, some of the best outside London. Well, the similarities that jump to mind are the slave trade. Um, they're both ports. The access from the West with slaves and goods was very, very easy um, being on the west side of, uh, of England. I think that with ports go a certain mentality. Bristol and Liverpool have probably got similar traits in the way people act and possibly in the way that the events of the slave trade have been hidden somewhat by a few museums. Bristol came first. Liverpool came second, that's to say it entered into competition with Bristol at a later point. As far as the slave trade is concerned, when Bristol was ordered to stop trading, Liverpool carried on, therefore making a lot more money without any competition. Certainly by the 1750s, around that time, Liverpool had overtaken Bristol in terms of the slaving activity. Bristol had a stronger association and more developed industry in terms of sugar than Liverpool did. In many ways, looking at how the communities have developed culturally, I think that at similar or different stages have probably gone through similar sorts of transitions to bring themselves to where they all are now. Bristol prefigured in 1980 what was to follow later um, and it set the scene for what was a national rebellion. Despite their similarities, there are contrasting levels of development, attitudes, outlook and culture from the black communities in Bristol and Liverpool. In what way would you say the slave trade heritage has impacted Bristol, in particular the black community? The slave people who came here back in centuries ago and what it was like in Bristol then, you know, concert of like places with names white ladies who wrote Black Boy Hill and Bruce Cemetery and a few slaves who were buried down there like Skippy Africanas and all that people, you know, we know the history of those type of things. You know, we're still coming out of the shackles and then out of the shackles of mental slavery in a way to kind of uplift ourselves, but obviously there's been a loss of culture, um, name, language, traditions and adoption of 
European ones, which has been kind of detrimental to us. And there were a, a growing community of poor black people who had to survive uh, through racism, um, poverty, bad health care. And as a result of that, black communities actually uh, turned into ghettos. Um, St Paul's being a so-called ghetto. We're still suffering some of the syndromes of the disunity in the community, you know. I guess the negative impact is where we're struggling still with our identity and coming to terms with our Africanness. The diversity amongst the groups, whether that be of West Indian, African, British born, African, you know, Africans on the continent, there's still a number of rivalries and this month has been born out of the slave trade heritage basically. What contribution do you think people of African ancestry have made to the city? It financed, you know, the industrial revolutions and stuff like that. You know, these are major developments in European history and culture. And so, the movement of the produce into Liverpool or Bristol and the creation thereof of, of industry, whether it's banking, whether it's shipping insurance, and so on. If people start to appreciate and understand and respect the achievements of African peoples, then obviously in turn they'll start to appreciate and respect people of African ancestry, no matter where they're coming from within the African diaspora. Um, I feel that the black people of uh, Bristol City, uh, even from the slave times, have made a contribution to all um, people activity in the city, from um, building architecture, a lot of the uh, nice buildings you see in Park Street in Clifton were actually built by uh, black architects. Um, for instance, the uh, parts of the cathedral, the library. There is still generations of black people in Bristol who can actually uh, testify that they actually built or, or lent a hand in actually building those particular buildings. Um, those buildings now are in Bristol are revered as landmarks of Bristol. People from all over the world come to visit those, but I don't feel that there is any recognition that black people actually made a, a, a quite a large contribution to those buildings. Bristol's black contributions uh, are not recognised, they're not sort of heralded in the same way as, say for instance, Brunel or Colston. Um, everybody who visits Bristol needs to know what contribution African people made to the city, whether it would be volunteer or in shackles and bondage. Financially, no doubt, our blood, our sweat, our tears from our ancestors contributed to the wealth of Liverpool from a fishing port, you know, to a major city. In the contemporary times, we've also made contributions by labour resources. You know, we've all come over here and our families from the West Indies in 1950s and 60s. And generally, the black community and the black workforce has contributed large um, amounts to Liverpool, Bristol and New Orleans. Let's talk about the music scene, for instance. The music scene of Bristol. Bristol is, is claimed to be on the map as far as music is concerned. Uh, many bands have come out of Bristol. If you listen closer to their lyrics, if you listen closer to their beats and to their actual rhythm, it, you, you actually start to hear um, African influence, whether it be from the actual continent itself or even from the West Indies and, and those islands around there. There's a few so, little lads were born here. Yes, they've been given the opportunity to like run a size and massive attack and so forth. But what about the other people who are set? You know what I mean? The development for these lads. You know what I mean? They're still there. They're still, a lot of them still haven't gotten the opportunity. And a lot of them could still do things that, you know, will enable Bristol to, to rise and paint a picture of, um, you know, excellence, really. With New Orleans, you've got all the blues and soul and jazz that's very much rooted in people of African ancestry. In terms of singing and stuff, and the kind of connection between the, the Beatles and um, the black, black singing in the city, singing um, soul and so on, the chants and so on, it's, it's fairly well documented. And again with New Orleans, you've got the whole contribution of culture in respect of carnival and masquerade and Mardi Gras, all these things that African people through their heritage and culture have contributed. The reason New Orleans culture is unique is because blah, blah, blah. it's a blending of different cultures here in New Orleans. 
Yes. Nowhere else in the world did these particular cultures interact as they did here. If you're looking specifically at entertainment, you know, you've got people like Sherry Eugene on the news in Bristol. You've got the likes of Kathy Tyson, Craig Charles, Lewis Emmerich, Ebony. In a more subtle way, a more sort of covert way, the culture and the, the traditions of, of black and African people have been drained from them, but yet they haven't been given the credit. Other people have actually taken credit for it. In Bristol, again, the legacy of slavery is evident in our mentality. There are blatant rivalries within the black community with Africans from the continent and Africans from outside. The Nigerian versus Jamaican rivalry epitomizes the situation. It's different from, from everywhere else. And with the city like it is, in a way, as I said earlier on, it's made up mostly of Jamaican people and the are springs. It make it a very unusual type of setting, really. It's a very complex community to, be, to understand because Jamaican, Jamaican as a community as such is not very easy to live with. Anglo-Africans have adopted a Western identity, employing the cultural practices and values of white Europeans and not Africans. This again breeds conflict and disunity. There is also the fear factor of West Indians, whether from the islands or British-born descendants. Some habitually associate us with crime and violence. There is no more crime and violence in our communities than there are in any other. Like we are just leave to be drug sellers, like you know the system just want to make us into criminals. Therefore, yeah, well, they don't really give a shit about doing anything about the drug problem because it's not affecting them; it's affecting us. Yeah. But until that has been that has been dealt with, St Paul's will always have a social problem. But now it's easier for other communities in Bristol to look on St Paul's and run with the stereotype that it's just full of unemployed black people who smoke drugs all day. But if anybody was to come down to St Paul's and actually see the warmth of the community, the creativity and the positivity that's actually going on, they would realise that the actual people who live there want that problem eradicated once and for all. Although there's a lot of things about crime on the street, but it's one of those communities that you can still walk in and still feel safe in a lot of ways, you know what I mean? For most of the city, the city is stagnant. The black community in the whole is stagnant. They ain't doing nothing. And right now the creative ability within the community is very much stagnated. Everybody uses it to bring money in, or to bring funds in, to bring a lot of things in, but at the end of the day, it's still in sense of emptiness. There's nothing going on. Liverpool's changed because it's been in a period of decline over the last 15 years. Yes, drugs has kicked in the community like most things and kind of deteriorated it over the last 15 years too. What's changed is maybe people's outlooks or there are some pockets of people who are a bit more progressive now we've developed over the last 15 years. We've realised that there's different angles to broach things. Visual artists like uh, Paul Klotz or Carl Eversley or whoever what they have done is, is, is certainly put things on the map and hopefully open up a few doors. You're not going to go back and fight those same battles. There's new horizons, um, new aspirations. Back in this city, um, some people quite clearly say when their relatives or family come, um, come and see the gallery. So it's become a, a, a reference point for black people in this city in terms of certain issues to do with what they have and what they relate to. Museums and galleries and so on um, can be important cultural reference points for people. Slave Remembrance Day, um, a national an annual day in which I don't go to work <laughs> because I'm remembering uh, the, the journey and work of ancestors who had transformed, transformed the world, transformed the continents, um, willingly and unwillingly. Although both communities have been subjected to similar treatment, Liverpool's black community is in a worse state than Bristol's. It could be argued that this is merely a reflection of the north-south divide, where the most prosperous towns are southern-based. How do you see Bristol City and its black community? Is it surviving, thriving or striving? For me, Bristol, Liverpool and New Orleans have got contrasting forms of development. 
I see Bristol as being more thriving. I see Liverpool as being surviving. Um, and I see New Orleans as thriving. Bristol City is thriving in many areas um, with its technology, the amount of organ uh, important organisations that have come to rest in Bristol. Uh, Bristol has made a lot of money over the years. Um, it's very wealthy. Um, it's bidding at the moment for 2008. Really and truly parallel in Liverpool and Bristol within the whole European concept of black people's development. Bristol seems to have got itself together more. Maybe that's because more of the diversity is there. There's a lot more people from the islands and from the dialect from the African continent which maintain a culture which has helped that city to actually pick up and thrive. The decline of the slave trade and subsequent industries parallels the decline in the black community in Liverpool. Some feel that its cultural makeup has stifled its development. Others feel that the black community in Liverpool is isolated, different from other communities throughout the country. For Liverpool, I'd like to see it to develop into a thriving community. I'd like to see the culture that was once there come back again, that whole diversity of culture, activities and events, which basically help develop social cohesion. There needs to be a lot more of that. You know, there needs to be an infrastructure set up in Liverpool by its own black community so that it can actually do things and for itself and encourage people from every generation. I'd like to see uh, the needs and wants from the black and ethnic minority communities actually taken care of um, in the form of education, community uh, projects, buildings, new um, resource centres and a lot more funding being made available to black communities, sort of satellites from the council where you can access funds or help um, in the areas that you need to develop properly as a uh, community. Bring some of those people to be given the opportunity to do things as well, because in the process that they too can help. For me, I'd like to see some kind of link between the communities and the less of the rivalry between the black British, the West Indians and the Africans. It's a kind of feature that I think is a bit of a negative one, despite the really positive things that are going on within Bristol City. Bristol is undeniably thriving. It has started to rebuild its communities in St Paul's and Eastern, providing social, cultural and educational services, all the things that keep a community very much alive. What is painfully obvious though, is that the contributions made by people of African ancestry need to be acknowledged, promoted, and most importantly of all, respected. But people of African ancestry, African? <laughs> Skibio, Africanus, Skibio. <laughs>